Hi everyone and welcome back to NTE. This is the missing video for my multiple choice question video on the photoelectric effect. Right. So if you've watched that video, you'll know that in November 2018, they did not have a multiple choice question on the photoelectric effect. So I decided I will just answer the full question that was in that paper. Right. And that happens to be question number 11. Okay. Now, they start off by saying that the threshold frequencies of cesium and potassium metals right, are given in the table below. Now, we always have to be thinking while we are reading our questions and just reminding ourselves what exactly is the threshold frequency. All right, now simply remember that the threshold frequency, right, which we symbolize by this F with a zero at the bottom, a subscript of zero, we call it F naught, right? The threshold frequency is simply the minimum frequency of light which is needed for us to emit some photoelectrons from the surface of a metal. Okay, now in this table we now see that, okay, we have um, two threshold frequencies of the same magnitude if they're both 10 to the exponent 14. So the determining factor is going to be these decimals over here. 5.55 right, is a higher threshold frequency, which means that it takes more energy to get an electron right free from the surface of potassium metal compared to that of cesium. All right, so 11.1, they start us off like normal with a theory question, they want us to define the term work function. Okay, and by now you should be able to you know comfortably define what is the work function. Now the work function and we denote the work function with W naught. Okay, so the work function of a metal is again the minimum, right, these are the keywords here, minimum energy this time, it's not a frequency, it's energy, right, it's the minimum energy required to emit photoelectrons from a metal surface. Okay, so the minimum energy required to emit photoelectrons from the metal surface is what we call the work function of the metal. Okay, question 11.2 then says which one of the two metals, right, in the table, right, and they're referring to this table over here, has the higher work function. Okay, give a reason for the answer that you're going to give by referring to the information in the table. Okay, now for this one, you must just simply understand what we call um, proportion in physics, right? So whenever we have an equation that relates to quantities, especially if there is some sort of a constant within that equation, right, then there is a proportionality that exists, right? Either a direct proportion or an inverse proportion. Okay? Now, we know that the work function of any metal is related with this uh, equation. We have Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. So now, because we're looking at Planck's constant over here, this value is always the same. So we see this relationship whereby the work function is directly proportional to the threshold frequency, right? So now, in order for you to then answer this question which says which one of the metals has the higher work function, well, it means if we have a direct relationship between these two quantities, if something has a higher work function, it means that it necessarily has a higher threshold frequency, okay, because this H value is a constant, right? So to answer, you can even put this in your answer as it is. But basically, you will start off by answering the initial question, which is which metal has the higher work function, and you have to write it down. It is potassium, as you can see. Okay. Then they said, give a reason by using the information in the table, which means you must quote right, these values. Right. So your answer is potassium, and then you're going to say since... 
um, the threshold frequency of potassium is 5,55 times 10 to the exponent 14 hertz is larger, you can even say greater, than that of cesium given as 5,07 times 10 to the exponent 14 hertz. But you don't necessarily have to word it in the same way that I've done, but so long as, since they said, use the information in the table given, somewhere along the lines, you must have these values in the answer. Okay. All right, moving on. They now say that the simplified diagrams below, right, show two circuits, A and B, containing photocells, right, and the photocell in circuit A contains a cesium metal plate, while the photocell in circuit B contains a potassium metal plate. Okay, both of these photocells are irradiated with ultraviolet light. Okay, so that's the same in both these experiments. We have different metals, which means that each of them will have their own work function and threshold frequency. Okay. Now they say that ultraviolet light with the same intensity okay, and a wavelength of 5.5 times 10 to the exponent 7 meters right, is incident on the metal plate. We then told that um, the ammeter in circuit A registers a current. Okay. All right, question 11.3 then says, by means of a calculation, determine whether the ammeter in circuit B will also register a current. How am I going to structure this? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, let's calculate the frequency of the ultraviolet light. So I'm going to say, the speed of light is equal to frequency times lambda, since I'm given the wavelength that we are using. And then I'm going to substitute, so this is 3,00 times 10 to the exponent 8. And that's going to equal the frequency times the wavelength given is 5,5 times 10 to the exponent negative 7. Right, so then if you plug these values into the calculator, we see that um, the frequency of lights that we're using is currently 5.45, right? times 10 to the exponent, 14, okay, right, now let's compare it with the threshold frequency of the potassium metal, you can see it is less than, right, so we're going to say 5,45 times 10 to the exponent, 14 is less than the threshold frequency of potassium okay so then to answer the question um, therefore circuit B will not okay and I will actually write that in capital letters, right, so it stands out. Okay, circuit B will not register a current. All right, so moving on to question 11.4, they say calculate the maximum kinetic energy of an ejected electron in circuit A. Right, okay, so we will now want to calculate what is the kinetic energy that these electrons are 
coming off with okay and actually in my circuits if you can see i'm very sorry that it's been on screen for so long um my current is in the wrong direction Not that it matters, but just so that in case somebody was confused, right? We now want the kinetic energy that these electrons were coming off with over here, right? So we have a nice formula for that. We have that the energy, right, of light or photon, sometimes I use that, is equals to the work function plus the maximum kinetic energy. Okay. All right, so let's expand this equation a little bit. Right, um, we have that energy is equals to Planck's constant times the frequency of the light, which we've actually already calculated in 11.3. Okay. Was it 11.3? Yeah, indirectly. And then we have H times the threshold frequency plus the maximum kinetic energy. Okay, now all of these things need to be substituted. 6 comma 6, 3 times 10 to the negative 34. And now this frequency, remember, is this frequency of the UV light. So it's the 5 comma 4, 5 times 10 to the exponent 14. This must then equal Again, Planck's constant. Times the threshold frequency, but remember we are working in circuit A. Né? So it is basically the threshold frequency of the cesium. So it's 5,07 times 10 to the negative 14, uh, times 10 to the 14. I'm not going to show any other rearrangement here. I'm just going to calculate it immediately on the calculator. Right, so if you plug all of that into your calculator, this is what the kinetic energy comes out to. If you don't want to make a mistake or you just want to see again how do you let the calculator round up for you, um, remember you go shift setup and you go to number seven and you don't do the mistake that I did last time. You don't enter how many decimal places you need but how many digits you need. So you need three digits in order to round off to um, two decimal places, so then it is this value exactly. Okay, so it's 2.52 times 10 to the negative 20. And remember, energy is always in joules. Okay. All right, last question, 11.5, application of theory. It says, how will the maximum kinetic energy right, of the ejected electron calculated above, right? how will it change when the intensity of the incident light increases? Right? Please always remember that changing the intensity of a light will never affect the kinetic energy. So the answer here is, remains the same. Right. So what do we actually achieve whenever we change um, the intensity of a light that is already in this condition, right? The frequency of that light is already greater than the threshold frequency. All that we're going to change is the number of photoelectrons that we eject. We're going to achieve to eject more photoelectrons, which basically increases the current in the circuit, right? But the photoelectrons that are ejected will all still be reject, uh, ejected with exactly the same kinetic energy as was calculated in 11.4. Right. So that's it for then um, November 2018, the photoelectric effect.